Good morning and welcome to the uh, Friday morning prayer time and devotional here at Faith Presbyterian Church. Welcome to the book of Judges. And so if you have your Bibles, let's go to Judges uh, chapter 3. Uh, and we're going to pick up in verse 7 and we're going to look at the very first judge that God raises up. But if you'll notice chapter 3, uh, verses 1 to 6, uh, God gives us a list of nations that he left around. And uh, some of the problems that they caused for God's people. It's sort of a prelude um, into uh, the, the long line of Judges that was to come. But before we jump into the book of Judges, I, w I want you to notice a, a fundamental problem uh, in, in, in God's people. Um, we're forgetful people. We forget all the time. We forget what God has done for us. We forget God's love. We forget God's grace. Um, and we get wrapped up uh, in our own selfish thoughts, our own selfish activities, and, 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 and into our own lives instead of getting wrapped up into the life of God. God has called us into his life through his son, Jesus Christ. He has empowered us to live in his life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And yet we are constantly living for ourselves. And this, this theme of, of, uh, of, of uh, being of gospel forgetfulness instead of gospel remembrance uh, is one of the main themes of the book of Judges. In fact, look at Judges chapter 3, verse 7. We read, And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God. Now, you know, remembering and forgetting is a really important theme. It's a really big subject in the Bible. When God's people cry out and say, God, remember your mercy and grace. Remember your steadfast love. Remember your promises. Remember your your your, your covenant. Uh, what they are essentially saying is that is, is they're not trying to get God to forget to remember something that He's forgotten. They are appealing to His character. Essentially, they're saying, "Remember, God, that you're merciful. Oh, God." Remember that you are loving. Remember that you are covenant keeping. Or better yet, they're, they're basically saying, Oh God, act based upon your mercy. God, please don't act based on, based on your wrath or your anger. Act based, act uh, according to your mercy and grace. Act according to your steadfast love. Act according to your promises. And so when we read in, in Judges 3, 7, that they forgot the Lord their God, we, we basically are, are seeing, it's not that the people forgot something, they forgot some information. They are living apart from what God has done for them. They are living apart from what God had did for them and to them in order to have life, in order to have God's blessings. They instead have started living for something else. They knew better. It's not, that, it's not that they forgot and they were like, and God kind of had to jog their memory a little bit and, and shake them and go, hey, remember? And they're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. God, I'm so sorry. I, for, I totally forgot that information. No, no. They knew what God had done for them. They remember what God had done for them, but yet they were freely choosing to do something else. They were freely choosing to live for someone else. And who is that someone else? Well, they, they, uh, they forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals or Baals. All right, if we want to get really Hebrew with it, it's Baal and Asheroth. Now, who is Baal and, who, and what is the Asheroth? Well, when we know about Baal, Baal was basically a fertility god. He was a fertility god in that he was the god of agricultural um, gain. Uh, if you in, in pagan cultures and Canaanite cultures, um, if you wanted your crop to produce a lot of fruit or a lot of vegetables. Uh, then you would pray to Baal. And along the same lines, he was also a fertility god in that if you wanted a lot of kids, you pray to Baal. And in order to um, please Baal or appease Baal, you would go to the local Baal or Baal temple um, and you would partake in sexual activity with a, with a temple prostitute. And that activity was seen as worship to Baal, to Baal. And then Baal would be pleased, or Baal would be pleased, and he would give you a good crop, or he would give you lots of children by your wife. That's what the people of Israel had started to partake in. That's what they started to worship. That's who they started to worship. The Asherah were basically uh, statues, if I can put it like that. They were phallic symbols 
put throughout the land. Um, and the Ashroth was a, a visible symbol of a sex cult. I mean, that's how twisted and perverted God's people had become. And they included that kind of activity in with worshiping Yahweh, in with worshiping the Lord. And this stirred up God's anger. Look at verse 8. Therefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of someone else. The anger, and the, the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. God will not tolerate. God will not put up with uh, bringing um, outside influences into the life of the church, into our own lives. We must be living our lives exclusively before the Lord, exclusively exclusively for the Lord and for the glory of God. And how do we do that? We remember. And it's not like we need to put up uh, 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 reminders everywhere around the house uh, because we've forgotten. What we need to do is we need to live in accordance to what God has done for us. Just, just like when we cry out to God and say, God, remember your mercy, we're saying, God, act according to your mercy in the same way when God says do not forget me he's saying live in accordance to the grace that I've given unto you and that's what we need to do that's how we we develop a gospel memory we seek to always have the gospel in front of us uh, behind us around us over us and under us so that we can live in light of the grace of God and live exclusively for the glory of God now one of the coolest names in all the Bible comes up on us, right? Um, God sold them into the hand of Kushan Rishathaim. That's a great name, Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the people of Israel served Kushan Rishathaim eight years. But when the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the people of Israel who saved them, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. Now, does this, does this narrative sound familiar? It sounds like... The book of Exodus, doesn't it? The people, the, the people of Israel were, were, were in slavery for 400 years in Egypt. They cry out to God. God raised up Moses to rescue them. You're in slavery to your sin. You cry out to God. And God sends a Savior to rescue you. This is a redemptive pattern. We cry out to God looking for help. We cry out to God looking for salvation. And God gives us a Savior and saves us. This right here in the book of Judges is a pattern of what God does through the personal work of his son, Jesus Christ. He has sent us a savior so that we may remember his grace and not forget his grace. So that we may remember to live for him and not forget to live for him. This is the pattern of the gospel. And the amazing thing in the book of Judges is that God does this over and over and over and over and over again. But, but in Jesus, he, he just does it once. He sends Christ once to offer the final sacrifice for our sins. And when it was offered, he sits down at the right hand of God the Father. He has saved us. And, and listen to what God does with Othniel. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and the Lord gave Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed over Cushan Rishathaim. So the land had rest forty years. Then Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. They were in slavery for eight years, but God. Uh, in sending this judge and sending Othniel gives them rest for 40 years. 40 years. God extends this time of peace. God gives them a, a, an extended time of peace, an extended time of salvation, an extended time where they are at rest with the Lord in safety and in comfort. Well, Christ came so that we can have uh, eternal life, comfort, and peace for all of eternity. For all of eternity. And so let us see Jesus as our rest. Let us see Jesus as our peace, as our comfort. And let that, let that good news, that eternal life that we have, let that be something that we remember and never forget. Let that be the good news that causes us to act in accordance to God's grace uh, because God has been so gracious to us and to live for him. Let's pray. 
God, thank you so much for your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to save us, to rescue us from slavery. And thank you for giving us not 40 years, but eternal life in him. God, cause us to walk in his ways. Cause us to remember how good and gracious you've been toward us. And may we live for your glory. And all these things ask your son's precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I hope you are well. Um, text me, email me, or call me if you need anything. In the meantime, I'm praying for you. And may the Lord continue to bless you. Goodbye.